It's VE3 HTB Dave in Toronto, and I just uh, did another really quick antenna project, uh, and I call this uh, emergency or uh, in a pinch type uh, antenna. Basically, I made it out of spare parts. Basically, it's made out of spare parts, uh, old coax. Um, uh, the only thing I had to purchase was the tuning condenser and I purchased the, the, um, the wrong type. I'll zoom in on it in a minute and you can see what it is. So uh, here we are, my first attempt at a magnetic loop antenna. Now this is real rough. This is a real, real, real prototype, but it does work. So here we go. Let me change the camera. So uh, I didn't give you the dimensions. The outer loop is exactly nine feet long. The inner loop, uh, I didn't even measure it. I just guessed it at what it should be. And I, I put the uh, SO239 up there because I wanted to, didn't want to cut the coax. Um, so it's better if you can eliminate as many connectors as possible. Um, I have it soldered directly onto the capacitor, which is good. And uh, when I get another piece of coax, I'll solder that directly onto the uh, inner loop. And I'll use a jumper to figure out what the exact light. Uh, my uh, ultimate goal is, is to uh, figure out how to get it on uh, uh, 40 meters to 10 meters. So this is uh, the E3 HTB signing off. Hopefully, uh, you all make another video when I get some more permanent pieces for this. I want to be want to take this uh, off to field day this year, set up in a park somewhere, and see what we can do. 73s from BE3 HDB. Okay, here we go. So basically, we've got the coax. This is RG8X. That's uh, what I got. And uh, this piece of cardboard is I didn't have a spacer readily available. I wanted to see if I could make this without buying anything other than the condenser, which I ordered through eBay. I have another one on order uh, with wider spacing between the plates so I can get uh, more power. So as you can see, it's really rough. At the base of the uh, loop is a little tuning condenser. And basically an old pen, because you have to get your hand as far away from the loop, otherwise it... Uh, affects the capacitance. Okay, now you see the plates on this are really close together. And at the top, at the top we have the other loop, the primary. This is basically a transformer. Okay, there's the uh, So that little loop at the top is what drives the outer, the outer loop, and the outer loop is tuned with this condenser. And you can't hear much in the way of if I had a, a little lower capacitance. The sweet spot on this is so small that you can't really hear it with your ear. You can, however, see it with the uh, uh, SWR meter. Okay, the main problem with this is the plates are really close together. So I can get this to focus. So if I go above 10 watts, it arcs over. So, I'll be back in a minute with the actual live test. Okay, I wasn't getting very good results, so what I did was I took this connector here and I pulled it down, which made my primary a little longer. I'm going to do some more, just a little bit more.
So as you can see, the length, the length and the placement of the primary loop does affect the SWR. Now, I'll try this again. I've repositioned my uh, condenser. I don't know if you can hear that. It's real quiet right now. Hear that? So you get it so that the noise level is the loudest, and then we key down. Okay, there's the, excuse my messy desk, pretty high, three to one. Okay, so here's, you heard the uh, noise level on the radio come up when I got the closest to the resonant point of the loop. I'm going to transmit now on 10 watts. It's as low as I can set my TS-50. And we'll see how low we can actually get the SWR. I'm making very fine adjustments. Like, really fine. Okay, that's about it. You can watch how sharp the uh, sweet spot is. gives us 10 watts out and approximately half a watt back, not too bad. Wow. So as you can hear, I'm going to show you something else. I, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm turning the VFO on my rig here. And as you can see, I think, the SWR is climbing. It's up to uh, 2 to 1 now, 2.5 to 1. And if we go back down to the sweet spot, Oh, I'm sorry, 1.5 actually. That's about it. So that's not the greatest, but if I messed around with the length of the, um, if I messed around with the length of the uh, primary coil, which I can do by uh, bearing different spots on the uh, um, uh, primary coax cable. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I made, uh, I, what you do is you, uh, you only use the outer braid. So basically when you hook it up to the uh, SO239, you only hook up the uh, center connector um, for the actual secondary loop. For the primary, of course, it's just like anything else, one, one to the braid one to the uh, center point so that's how it works and uh, the other day when I was experimenting with it I got the uh, on 20 meters I got it down to one to one but uh, uh, as you can see it's a pretty rough uh, pretty rough little antenna so uh, what I could do if I could get it more circular Maybe adjust the length of the uh, inner conductor, the primary, make it a little smaller. Uh, it would probably get right down to one to one.